Namaste. How's it going? I'll talk about the Vandas in today's lesson and give you tips and insights on how you can appreciate the internal dynamics and apply them in your practice. I've mentioned this many times in the past. Bandhas are not tightening, clenching, contracting, and making your body stiff. Although you will see external yeah, physical adjustments, the origin of the technique comes from within. In fact, you cannot learn bandha as a separate practice. They just happen organically. You don't have to learn them which means that yeah, you need to continue your cleansing practices, uh, kriya, pranayama, mudra, asana, yeah, even chanting, yes, they, because all of this preparatory, call them kriyas, techniques, and off the mat observances too, yeah, shall pave way for the opening of your subtle body, the subtle anatomy. And then it's inevitable when the inner body, the dormant centers open up, yeah, the bandhas manifest, the bandhas open up to and activate because we utilize the bandhas, bandhas means valve or regulators, to uh, flow the energy, uh, to regulate the amount of energy we flow through our system depending on the element at hand. All right, we have three primary bandhas, but we have more actually than three. But the three primary ones are the most active. Mula, Udiyana, Bandha, they're mostly physical. So we use them, organically use them when we practice asana. Uh, so we keep our bodies light, supported also pranayama. But they are mostly um, active during the asana and other physical observances. All right. When you're sitting tall during meditation, you organically activate or make use of your yeah, mula, da, mula Bandha and your Udiyana Bandha. During breath regulation, the Jalandhara Bandha is the most predominant. I will be focusing actually on the Jalandhara Bandha. All right. The Jalandhara Bandha is so subtle. It's not clenching and tightening your, your neck. Yeah, so you, it's not just about bowing the head and then pulling the throat back. No. You can do Jalandhara Bandha even if you are yeah, sitting. Yeah. Passively, yeah, even you know, when you're doing your normal task, yeah, you can do Jalandhara Bandha. All right, now Jalandhara Bandha uh, is um, the um, broadening yeah, of your windpipe. All right, so that alone will make you wonder. I thought it's squeezing. I thought it's clenching. I thought it's tightening. No, you actually broaden the windpipe yeah, when you inspire the breath in. Yeah, if you place your hands here, maybe your fingers, as you inhale, like the windpipe broadens, and then you feel that you will have double chin. Yeah, like the, the throat broadens, and then your chin yeah, drops down. Yeah. And as you exhale, yeah, the windpipe uh, returns, yeah, and then the, the skin here, the fleshy part of this, rises. Inhale, broaden, yeah, the windpipe drops and then broadens, and thus you will feel like you, your chin yeah, drops too. And as you exhale, yeah, they yeah, restore back to their original yeah, position. All right. So Jalandhara Bandha, the reason why yeah, the windpipe broadens yeah, and the chin drops yeah, is to pave way for the breath entering and at the same time narrowing inside the, the throat region, not yeah, clenching and then tightening the front, but you have to broaden the external windpipe yeah, so the air can come inside yeah, but internally, yeah, the wind, the the back of the throat goes narrow and thin. Therefore, bandhas are actually internally they direct the energy to the midline. Therefore, internally you feel narrow, but externally you open. Good. <laughs> so really, yes, it's opposite. Yeah. So if your mind thinks that. To utilize the bandhas, you need to contract the body you know, so you can channel the energy to the midline. No, it's the opposite. The external body would have to open, yeah, would have to re relax, yeah, and then make room for the internal system to yeah, work the energy to the midline. So as you inspire the, the breath in, yeah, so even if you're there, for example, your neutral neck, yeah. 
I'm doing my Jalan Darabanda. Yeah. So even if I'm lying down, flat on my tummy, I'm doing my Jalan Darabanda. Yeah, and then this goes uh, beautifully with your Ujjayi Pranayama. If your Ujjayi Pranayama is developed already, all right, without you thinking about doing it, yeah, it only means it's an indication that all of your bandhas are active. All right, so the Ujjayi Pranayama is again another Pranayama which we don't learn separately. Yeah, Ujjayi Pranayama is like the bandhas. The Ujjayi Pranayama happens organically. So when your Ujjayi Pranayama is strong, it's an indication that your bandhas are strong. All right, so the Jalandara Bandha, yeah, what it does, as I've mentioned, it opens the walls of the windpipe so the air can come in, the energy can come in, but internally, yeah, the sensation is narrowing to the midline. So even if my head is tilted up like this, I can do Jalandara Bandha, yeah, because you know internally, yeah, how to access it, all right? And then the Jalandara Bandha, of course, would uh, require the other bandhas to uh, be active as well, yeah, but in less intensity, depending, of, as I mentioned, in the element hat. If you're sitting upright, yeah, like this, for example, you're doing your pranayama, yeah, the Udhyana Bandha will open, but not as... Um, as active, for example, as you prepare, for example, for a handstand or for an asana or for an arm balance. Because in an asana, yeah, you need to yeah, mm -hmm. allow the Udhyana Bandha yeah, to support you. Therefore, yeah, you're going to feel some subtle activation of the core. But in your, if you're sitting just passively neutral like this, the Udhyana Bandha is not as active. And then the Mula Bandha is actually very passive. All right, let me yeah, go down to the Mula Bandha. All right. It is, it's, it's, it's actually the same, all right? So the Mula Bandha, yeah, it's not clenching and tightening. When you breathe the Mula Bandha, actually the pelvis separate. <laughs> really? So the, the right and the left channel opens up externally. Yeah, so you can lift the energy up, all right? So the external body, yeah, moves away yeah, so we can collect yeah, the energy which comes from within. How can you isolate the internal energy if you're like this? Yeah, you're blocking it. So therefore, yeah, so you need to loosen the outer body yeah, so you can access the energy within. The Mula Bandha, yeah, as opposed to clenching and tightening your anal cavity, in anal genital region, no, you relax the pelvis. Actually, the pelvic floor, right? So let me get this one. All right. So actually, the pelvic floor drops, yeah? And then the, the right and the left side, yeah, the inner cavity here, oh yeah, opens up. Yeah, everything yeah, moves to the side. The pelvic floor drops, so you can lift the energy which is sitting inside. Yeah, because if you clench it, yeah, so you're not able to gather the energy because in energy channeling, you need to separate the energy from the external and the physical elements, right? And then you can't do that by clenching because if you clench it, you, you trap the energy. It's not that, it's not how we do energy channeling. So we allow whatever is getting in the way to open, meaning away from the midline, yeah? So we can isolate the primal force, so we can lift. Internally, the sensation is narrowing and thinning and rising. Externally, it's opening and broadening. All right. And that brings me to the topic of, for example, what? Diaphragmatic breathing or the abdominal breathing. In yoga, we call this a complete yogic breath. That when you inspire the breath in, the complete yogic breath, 
you will feel your abdomen walls open, the chest expand, but internally, yeah, you feel the sensation rise, like a thin line flowing through the line of your spine. Right? And in breathing exercises, the Jalandarabandha actually is the most active, so you can collect yeah, whatever is under or at the bottom to rise. And then by broadening, yeah, by broadening the windpipe and dropping the jaw. Yeah, and you will feel here the hollow of the throat goes deep because you're drawing the sensation from the inside. That sensation actually comes from the abs. So the Jalandara Bandha, this one, and the hollow of the throat, and the Mula Bandha, they are directly linked. Whatever is being sucked and drawn up here comes from there. All right. The folding of the head to the chest is just an additional support. It's not the main technique. Although it will help if you allow the head to passively, again, passively fold forward, not clench and tighten. Just allow it to relax. Therefore, the neck, you know, all the way down to the tail, one root for line. And then the head lightly looping forward will pave way for the opening of what? The intersection between the spine and the brain, the oblongata, because that's where we yeah, channel the breath. So we can flow either to the brain or to the body, depending again on the element. All right, now breathing in. If you want, yeah, you may place your hands or fingers there, inhaling. And you will feel this, yeah, broaden, and then drop. And at the same time, the hollow, the hole here goes deep and uh, hollow too, like empty, like vacuum. And then you're going to feel you know, the top of your sternum rise. Left. Good. Yes. So again, yeah, when you practice energy channeling and pranayama, don't tighten the body. Relax the body. Yeah, when you relax the body, you release whatever is clogging the energy. Yeah, trapping the energy, so you can isolate what's in the middle, what's in the center, yeah, and then you use the openness of your nadis, yeah, to channel the energy up, and therefore, yeah, it's not a beginner's practice, because as a beginner, our body, our breath, our spirit, and even our psyche, yeah, they're knotted, they're entangled, yeah, they're trapped. Yeah. So by you know, opening the body, by releasing stagnation, by releasing the blockages, purification, kriyas, one by one we separate this. Yeah. And what's sitting in the middle is the seed energy. Yeah, the Vish energy, the Kundalini energy. Yeah, and this energy rises. To enter the brain, because inside the brain, this is where the soma is, the passive spiritual divine energy we all have, yeah, and they meet either here, yeah, or here. There are many meeting points, but for me, the most um, I say uh, meaningful ones are the heart, yeah, which promotes what, yeah, our good, the welfare, and the goodwill of all. And then here, yeah, here is the meditative part, so we can unite with our divine spiritual source. Good. Thank you for listening, and I'll catch you in the next lesson. Have a beautiful day. Namaste.